I'm always surprised when people confess they never read, even though I used to be one of those people when I was younger. <laughs> Yet, what surprises me even more is when someone says they only read nonfiction. Don't get me wrong, I've read many nonfiction books that have had a real impact on my life. But I think people don't always give fiction books the credit they deserve. And since they are what sparked my love for reading, I just want everyone to love them as much as I do. I also believe that if more people read fiction, the world would be a much better place, which I know is a bold claim. Don't worry, I'm not gonna try to convince you that fiction is superior to nonfiction. But hopefully I can persuade you to read a little more fiction by sharing how it has enriched my life. And if you're already a fiction reader, I'd love to hear if you also share my sentiments. Despite my modest book collection, I'm actually an avid reader thanks to my local library and my e-readers. I can see you judging me for having two e-readers, but in my defense, they were both gifted to me by my family because they know I'm a huge bookworm. Anyway, when I occasionally mention to someone that I read about 100 books a year or so, I'm usually met with a similar response. First, they comment on how smart I must be for reading so much, and then they inquire on what I like to read. This is where things get interesting because when I answer that my favorite thing to read is fiction, especially fantasy, some people look like they want to retract their previous comment about me being smart. Mental that one, I'm telling you. I think people often view fiction as solely for entertainment and nonfiction for learning and self-improvement, which in my opinion is far from the truth. You see, nonfiction books are great at telling us important facts and information. Authors of nonfiction usually draw conclusions from their own experiences and research and attempt to convey this information to the reader. Whereas fiction challenges us to broaden our perspectives and gives us the elements to formulate conclusions on our own. While fiction stems from the creativity of the author's imagination, it draws inspiration from real-life experiences to mirror the intricacies of human existence. As humans, we learn best through experience, and fiction books sort of transport us into the minds of characters, exposing us to situations far beyond our daily lives. This immersion allows us to absorb emotions and ideas without undergoing those experiences ourselves aiding in our own personal growth journey and in the realization of our own potential. For instance, I will never experience what it's like to be a young black girl who prays for blue eyes every day so she can be beautiful and fit in. But Toni Morrison helped me get a glimpse into that little girl's life and reflect upon the familial and societal circumstances that would lead a black girl to wish she had blue eyes and understand not only the racial oppression, but also the violation brought upon the women in this novel by the men in their lives. I often say that I've lived thousands of lives through the many books I've read and have gained countless insights that have helped me in my real life. In fact, my journal is full of these insights because I always like to take note of how a book I'm currently reading helped me come to a certain realization at that point in my life. I believe the things we consume become part of us and inform the way we think and how we see the world. Through fiction, we encounter intricate choices and ethical dilemmas as characters grapple with them, urging us to contemplate, question, and reassess our own beliefs and perspectives. There's also a profound sense of connection when you encounter your own personal struggles mirrored on the pages of a book, even if the circumstances differ. It is as if the author has peered into your soul, capturing the essence of your experiences and emotions. This recognition makes you feel seen and validated igniting a sense of empowerment to confront your challenges head on and overcome them. I can honestly say that I've never read a nonfiction book that has made me cry, even if it's about a topic that pulls at my heartstrings. On the other hand, some fiction books have made me sob because it felt like I was the one experiencing the hurt or sorrow of a character. But if that alone isn't persuasive enough to encourage you to read more fiction, then perhaps my next few reasons will change your mind. 
Reading fiction has deepened my empathy, enhancing my capacity for understanding and compassion. By stepping into the shoes of fictional characters and seeing the world from their perspective, I learned to appreciate diverse viewpoints, even those I don't necessarily agree with. More often than not, I don't agree with the actions of a fictional character, yet I can understand the motivations behind their actions and the lived experiences that led them to make those choices without judgment. This book is a great example of that. If you haven't read The Goldfinch, I won't spoil it for you, but while I was reading this, there were many times where I wished the main character would have made different choices because I could see how things would play out. But I could also understand why he was making the choices he made based on his background and his environment growing up. It just goes to show how much our lived experiences impact the decisions we make in life. It's also worth mentioning that sometimes books can surprise you in the best ways. I almost passed up on this book because the little summary in the back just didn't pique my interest, but it ended up being one of my favorite reads and there were many lessons I took away from it. It's no wonder it won a Pulitzer Prize. Fiction has also expanded my vocabulary. English isn't my first language, and I can honestly say that my vocabulary improved exponentially since I started reading fiction novels. Compared to nonfiction, fiction uses a broader range of words to describe characters, emotions, and environments, especially in novels with extensive world building. This exposed me to words I didn't use or hear on a daily basis, and by seeing them repeatedly in books, they became part of my vocabulary. And as a bonus, it also improved my Scrabble skills. I've also noticed a significant improvement in my concentration, my creativity, and even my memory. When I'm reading a fiction novel that really draws me in, I get so engrossed in the story that I completely tune out. People around me may start talking to me and I won't even notice it. It has happened more times than I can count at this point and my friends and family know not to take it personally because I'm not actively trying to ignore them. I just simply don't register that they are talking to me. And this is coming from someone who has ADHD and is easily distracted. As for my creativity, it has definitely flourished from envisioning entire worlds and characters in my head. Not to mention how much my memory has sharpened from having to remember all of those characters and details, especially for long book series, which are my favorite. There is nothing better than making a cup of tea and finding a comfy spot to get lost in another world for a little while at the end of the day. Diving into a fiction book is one of my favorite ways to relax and de-stress. While some may find it odd, studies have shown that reading fiction reduces stress more effectively and quickly than other activities such as listening to music, going for a walk, or playing video games. In fact, stress levels were shown to be reduced by 68% after reading. Ultimately, fiction books offer many benefits beyond mere entertainment, and in my opinion, it's one of the greatest tools for bringing more humanity into the world. So if you're looking for a new pastime or seeking to reap the rewards of fiction reading, I highly recommend giving it a try. Who knows? You might just discover a newfound love for fiction that enhances your life in ways you never imagined.